All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rukakwadash, double honor said the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you, brothers that are laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity. And with charity, I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in GM at Chicago, coming to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit. Lord willing, they be edifying. And this video is going to be centered around uh, Rome, ancient Rome, and modern America. Comparing them and the similarities that they have. Which, um, <clears throat> America is pretty much, uh, or it is the reincarnation of ancient Rome. Okay, uh, we all know the ancient Roman Empire fell, right, um, and it has uh, revived under the disguise of America, okay, uh, the scriptures in the book of Daniel, let's get Daniel, the seventh chapter. Uh, the vision of the four beasts, right? Which these four beasts represent four kingdoms that will reign in the earth. Um, and after the fourth beast is pretty much uh, destroyed, um, then will the kingdom of Yasharala begin in the world, okay? So, according to this prophecy, right, either we're in one of the four beasts or the four beasts, um, all ended up dying or had their time and we're in the kingdom of Israel. So, we're obviously not in the kingdom of Israel, right? So, that would mean that we're still during the time of one of these beasts. Right, uh, the first beast represented the Syrio Babylonian Empire, the second beast represented the Medio Persian Empire, the third beast represented the Greeks, and the fourth beast represented the Romans. Okay, um, but the Roman Empire fell, right? We already know this for, for the longest time, all right, um. But what this prophet, uh, the scripture says that uh, when it speaks about the deadly wound being healed, right? That's what's talking about uh, the revival of the Roman Empire through America. Okay. Um, and it started during the time of the Renaissance. Okay, when... Uh, Esau came back into power after the Dark Ages. That's pretty much uh, when it revived. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start off here in the book of Daniel 7 and verse 7. It says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all beasts that were before it and it had ten horns. Alright, so again, the fourth beast, the Roman Empire, right, which uh, through its military might and power that it had, it conquered, devoured, and took over. Everybody expanded all over, okay? <clears throat> and it was diverse in the rest of the beasts that were before it. All right, what made it different was uh, its political system in which uh, the kingdoms before was a monarchy in which you would have a king, uh, and 
then you will have a prince, which is the son, and he will reign in his stead. And that's how the rulership would uh, would be in the empire. Okay. Um, but this, where Rome came into power, it was different. All right. They elected somebody to rule. All right. Um, so this is First Maccabees, the eighth chapter. Um, okay, so this is, uh, Primer Leo de Maccabeus 8 y 14. Y que con todo esto, ningún... Oh, I'm tripping, man. Um, I'm so used to teaching in Spanish. Uh, sorry about that. So first, Maccabees. Eight. And 15. Um... 14, it says, yet for all this, none of them wore a crown or was clothed in purple to be magnified thereby. Again, that would be the king, right? Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house where 320 men sat in council daily consulting a way for the people to the end that they might be well ordered. All right. Uh, so it was a council. And that they had committed their government to one man every year who ruled over all their country and that all were obedient to that one and there was neither envy nor emulation among them. All right. So America's uh, current government and council is pretty much uh, they learned it from Rome. Right? They just remixed it a little bit. Did something a little bit differently. They got a House of Representatives. Alright? But you still have the... The two... The two parties. The Rome, Re Democratic and Republican parties. Which the scriptures speak of these things. In the book of... Uh, Revelations. The 13th chapter and uh, 11 it says and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon so this beast is America the two horns represent the Democratic and Republican parties right which uh, during the time of Rome it was uh, the Plebeians and the Patricians. The Patricians would be your Republican Party and the Plebeians would be the Democrats. And today, right? The dragon, right? Uh, the dragon is, is the Roman Empire, right? Which this is the Roman Empire, right? But this word dragon goes into the word dracon, right? Which, uh, would stand for the draconian laws that um, was made in which uh, if you broke any law, you would be punished severely, pretty much by death. All right. Um, so it goes into these uh, crazy... Crazy laws that uh, let me see if I can search it up. <laughs> Constricting. Greek applied the term to large constricting snakes. The Greek dracon was far more associated with 
poisonous spit or breath in the modern western dragon. Through fiery breath, you're still attested in few mists. Right? Um, which he saw as a serpent, right? The draconian laws were most noteworthy for their harshness. They were said to be written in blood rather than ink. Death was prescribed for almost all criminal offenses. Salone, who was the archon magistrate, blah, 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 blah. Right? So these type of uh, draconian laws are going to come back, right? When Esau Edom pretty much starts his fucking NWO. Right, it says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and then was thrown therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Right, so that's uh, um, um, America, right, and it was healed during the time of the Renaissance when they came back into power. Right, it says that he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth and in the sight of men. And when did that happen? Right, during World War II, all those bombings that they did in Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Right, all, all, everybody wondered after the beast. Right, who shall make war with the beast? Alright, but um, I haven't even brought out anything from this AI chat, right? So I asked this AI chat, it says, uh, what are the comparisons and similarities between America and Rome? Compa this is what they said, comparing ancient Rome and modern America can be insightful as both societies have played significant roles in world history and have similar similarities as well as notable differences. Here are some key comparisons and similarities. Republican foundations, governance, both Rome, particularly the Roman Republic and the United States are shaped by Republican ideals. Rome had elected representatives, a system of checks and balances and a Senate akin to the US Congress. Right, which again, we read in First Maccabees 8 and 15, Right, how Rome has set up their government and rulership and system, which America pretty much uh, just did the same thing. And they just did it a little bit differently, but they took that from the Roman Empire. It says cultural simulation diversity. Rome was a melting pot of cultures, languages, and religions, especially after its expansion. Similarly, the U.S. is characterized by its cultural diversity, shaped by immigration from around the world, right? And we call America the Great Melting Pot exactly for this reason, right? Confusion with mixture, all of this happening. All the nations of the world are here in America. No other country has a diversity of all the languages, religions, peoples, cultures in one country more than America, right? No other country. Uh, influence on regions both have projected their cultures and ideologies outward. Roman culture spread across Europe, North Africa, and parts of Asia, while American culture, technology, and ideology influence global cultures today. Right, that's the wine of the fornication. The influence of all Americanization, 
all over the world. Moism, all that Moism, right? Democracy bombs, their Hollywood, their music, their wickedness, their way of life, their philosophies, all right? It says military power, expansionism. Both Rome and America have been characterized by military strength. Rome expanded its territory through conquest, while America, particularly in the 19th and 20th centuries, sought to expand its influence through wars and interventions. What do you see America doing now? Involved in more wars, these little proxy wars in the so-called Middle East, just, just Southwest Asia. All right, the uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia, which is pretty much America and Russia. Right, it says economic systems, trade networks, Rome extensive trade networks through the Mediterranean, facilitating commerce across the West. The U.S. has a complex economy with significant domestic and international trade. All right. Um, works infrastructure engineering right now it goes into the differences the Roman Empire lasted for over a millennium in various forms while the United States is a unified political entity is comparatively young having been established in 1776 uh, the territorial control Religious influence, Christianity, all right, the political structure, which is senatorial power, right, um, but yeah, man, those are the main things right there. As you can see, it's the same thing. You look at the architecture of America, the White House, uh, Congress, all those things, um, how they're built and shaped. It's the same thing as Rome, as the Greeks, right? Which uh, the Greeks. When Alexander the Greek came on the scene, which was the Edomite, and could be traced his lineage back into Amalek. Okay, um, this is how we know who Esau is today, who's in power. Right, you just gotta put two and two together. What what's the prophecy say? Put two and two together. Use common sense. Right, it's not that hard, but only uh, the elect will have the understanding and the unction of the Holy One to understand and know all things. Alright. But that's pretty much it. Um, just wanted to do a video on that. thought that was interesting. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kakodash, the wonders of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Until the next time. Shalom.